Today on the Tiger Basketball Report, we'll review the Tigers' victory over the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights. Get ready, Tiger fans. The Tiger Basketball Report starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years to Wise Markets, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. Hello, and welcome to the Tiger Basketball Report. I'm your host, Spiro Maricas. The Tigers welcomed the Knights of FDU into CQ Arena this past Saturday. Senior forward John Davis recorded his fourth double-double of the season, 18 points, 13 rebounds. Tigers win 90-87. Let's take a look at the highlights. Quickly over midcourt. Anderson flips it to his right, work it in the corner. Three-point shot is good by Potts. He's hit two in a row, and it's 9-0, fairly Dickinson. All right, Mormon feeds it up to Morsell, gets it over midcourt to Adalamoto. William going to drive, slams it home. 9-2. William over midcourt, feeds right side, Morsell. Reverse, back door to Eddie Keith, lays it up and in, and the Tigers with four straight after Fairley Dickinson scored nine in a row. Mormon gets it ahead to Adala Motor to Morsell. Mike gonna drive, flips it to Davis, slam dunk. Beautiful ball movement by the Tigers, 26-16. Drives on Eddie Keith, now flip it out. Left side, Anderson for three, good. Eight point FDU lead, 39-31 with a minute 18 to go in the first half. Great defensive play ahead to Mormon. Mormon into the paint. Mormon goes up, basket's good, and he's fouled. Three on two break, feeds the Jiggets right side, 18-foot jumper, blocked by Keith, into the hands of Davis, ahead to Eddie. Eddie gonna drive, Eddie lays it up, basket's good, and he's fouled. To this Knights team, Davis with a three, no good, rebound Thomas, lays it up, missed it, gets it again, reverse layup is good. Alex Thomas with five, and the Tigers. Take the lead, 49-48 with 15-27 left to Jiggets. Jiggets up top, almost thrown away, it is. Adalamoto ahead to Mormon, there's no one around, slam dunk. And he's gonna get teed up for hanging on the rim. Cuts back, feeds it, left side to Mormon, fakes the three, dribbles down low to Thomas, reverse layup is good for Alex Thomas. Alex with 11 points and the Tigers up 10, 70 to 60. They've outscored FDU by 20 here in the second half. Cuts back, feeds it, left side to Mormon, fakes the three, dribbles down low to Thomas. Reverse layup is good for Alex Thomas. Alex with 11 points and the Tigers up 10, 70 to 60. They've outscored FDU by 20 here in the second half. Jiggets, top of the key, gonna drive, spin. 
Lays it up, basket's good, and he's fouled by Adalamoto, and William is fouled out. Gonna launch a three. Hit it with 19.1 seconds left. In addition to JD, four other Tigers scored in double digits, including forward Mike Morrisell. As always, I'm joined by, with the coach of the Towson University Tigers, Pat Scare. I'm so excited about that win, I couldn't get the words out. Coach, uh, tough basketball game. FDU was a team that you had lost to in overtime two years ago and at the buzzer last year. So you knew that this is a team that kind of gives you troubles. I mean, they are small, quick, and they can shoot. Yeah, they really can shoot. They've, uh, they've got uh, they're exceptional in offense, and they just play a different style. And, yeah, we had coughed up two games the previous year that we should have won literally at the buzzer, lost both of them. Um, so, you know, they, it's a strange game. You know, we score 90 points, don't make a three, miss 17 free throws, and they make a whopping 12 threes, um, including nine in the first half. But I, I was pretty proud of our guys for fighting back. I uh, thought our seniors, John and William, were, even though William got hurt, were, were tremendous physically in the game. Um, and then I, I told the staff at halftime, if we can't win this game, we're well, we not going to have a good year. Because I think there's certain times you've got to just you know, when things aren't going your way, you, you got you to gotta find a way and you got to figure some things out. And I thought our guys did that. Morcel didn't hunt shots. He was a tremendous passer, um, made foul shots. Eddie Keith played a really good all-around game. And, and we really passed it. You know, we really passed it. We shared it. Uh, I, I saw some pretty good growth from our club, I think, uh, this past week. Yeah, you were down 10 points at halftime. And, again, it was amazing that they were, I think, 9 of 16 from three-point range in the first half. You're down 43 to 33. You come right out in the second half and go right to them. I think you scored the first eight points of the second half, cut it to a two-point game, and from there you went ahead. Yeah, we get up 13 with like two to right. go. You know. Mike Morcell, his first seven points came from the foul line. He hadn't even made a field goal, and he had seven points. So obviously Mike was not forcing the issue, which no. we've seen him do at times. But, uh, you know, he ended up having a fine game, and, and John Davis was just a monster. Johnny's playing really well. I mean, this six-game homestand, he's been a monster. Um, he's our best rebounder. He's our most productive guy per minute. Uh, he's having a great year. And Mike, I thought, last week took major steps. He's our most talented guy. And I think last week he took major steps. He leads us uh, statistically in a lot of categories up at the top of the league in a lot of categories. And his points per shot is the best on our team. So he's, he's really efficient. Uh, but the other day is passing. You know, I'd say this after the game, you know, Mike's had, the only guy we have in the program, not only uh, talks about his scoring, but he's had games where he's gotten 30 points. He's had twice, two or three times his career, like eight, eight assists or more, and he's had double-figure rebounds like three times. So he's, I'm not saying he's Russell Westbrook yet, <laughs> but he's, he's capable of doing it on both ends and in a lot of different ways when he's locked in. I thought he was really locked in last week in both our games. And he was named College Sports Madness's CAA Player of the Week for his performance against Loyola and against Fairleigh Dickinson. The other thing about the Fairleigh Dickinson game that we saw was, again, William Adalamoto played well when he was in the game, but his minutes limited again because of foul situation. And he got hit, he got scratched he got in hit. the cornea, right. yeah, yeah. But what you had to like was that your team responded without William on the floor. No, no question. I, I think Justin Gorms played well. We got to get him more minutes. Um, and, and I thought Alex Thomas was sensational in the second half. Uh, you know, eleven and seven, and he really finished and kind of got into him. And then he responded. Um, but I thought William played pretty good with the foul trouble. You know, it wasn't like major foul trouble. Just we were looking at it on film so He missed like seven minutes with the um, getting the eye scratch, and he's okay now. But um, it was one of those ones like our training staff does a great job, and doctors are like, let's go here. <laughs> We knew he was playing pretty good, so you're trying to get him back on the floor as quickly as possible. Um, the home stands over, four and two. I know you want to be six and zero, oh, but four and two is certainly a lot better than three and three. And you have some momentum, you know, with this long break for uh, finals, and then and then UMBC, and then head to Vegas, which we'll talk about in the next show. But overall, when you look at this six-game home stand, what do you take away from it? Well, I think we ended well. I think we're getting more consistent. Um, certainly played 28 minutes of very good basketball against Loyola. And then really, um, the first like minute of the game wasn't good against FDU. Called a quick timeout. We were down 9 nothing. Yeah, 9 nothing Fast. And, and then with seven minutes to go in the first half, we were up 13. So that was a quick turnaround. And then obviously the last like three minutes was unbelievable. They made like six straight threes. But 
closer to 40 minutes. Uh, our defense, our rebounding numbers are off the charts nationally. Our shooting percentage is like fourth or fifth in the league. We're shooting 5%. Now, we're not making a lot of threes, but we've been pretty efficient. Our turnover margin is second in the league. So our numbers are, are good. Um, I, I think long-term is the tail of the tips going to be there. Have we learned from, you know, four really last-minute a last possession type losses right. and are we, are we ready to win those games I think the uh, challenging but fun piece about it before we get in the league is we've got three very very formidable opponents that'll test us in those areas absolutely and we will talk about those in the next episode that will do it for this episode of today's Tiger basketball report next time we will talk about the UMBC retrievers and the Tigers in the South Point Holiday Hoops Classic for head coach Pat Scary, I'm Spiro Marikas and as always go Tigers